Let's take a look at linear regression and best fit lines. Linear regression comes in when we have two sets of data and we're interested in seeing what the relationship is between those two sets of data. We go ahead and we make a scatter plot and then we take a look at it and see, hmm, does it appear that there's it's going up from left to right, that's going down from left to right, or do we not see any sort of relationship between the data? If it looks like there's a line going up from left to right or down from left to right, then linear regression would be an appropriate thing to use in that situation. So um, let's walk through an example here and see how we can work with this set of data to come up with a linear regression equation and a best fit line and see how this all works. So let's start by graphing. I'm going to go ahead and, and do this. I laid out a nice scale here already on my grid. So my first point is 116. So I'm going to go right here and I use a nice bright color so that those points stick out for us. Then 214 It's going to be here and 411 to put me right here and so on. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for a second while I graph these points and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got all the points graphed on my scatter plot here. So now I take a look at what's going on. Does there appear to be a relationship between the x values and the y values? And these could be any real world quantities. We just want to do the same thing. We look for that relationship. So Hmm, as I'm going from left to right, it appears that the graph is making its way down. The further we get here, the lower it gets. So it appears this would be a good situation for a linear regression. And we're going to go ahead then and determine a best fit line. Now, technology would allow us to find an absolute best fit line, but we can just eye it up and get a pretty good idea of what's going on here. So I'm going to do that in this situation. And so I grab my line and I want approximately the same number of points on either side of my line. So if I sketch my best fit line in here, it looks like it's kind of going down maybe somewhere through here. Something maybe about, maybe something like kind of like that. Okay? So, just sketched in a best fit line. Okay? Again, technology would allow us to find an exact best fit line, but this will work for our purposes if you don't have technology available. Okay? And the correlation that appears to be happening here is a negative correlation because we're going down from left to right. Okay. So now I've sketched in a best fit line. So the next thing I want to do is come up with an equation for that line. To do that, what I want to do is pick two points that fall on the line. Well, I'm going to just go ahead and take a look here and look for two points that hit at the intersection. So right here, notice this point is at 6-6. Six, six. So that might be a good point to choose for that line. Okay, and then... Let's see, let's go over here. Are there any other ones that look pretty close? Hey, this looks like a good one. I'm going to choose this point right here. Okay, and that's the point 2, 13. Okay, so now I've got two points. My two points are 6, 6 and 2, 13. Okay, and you could choose any point that fits on your best fit line that you sketched in there. Then, Given two points, we can come up with the slope and write an equation. So, to find the slope, remember we take the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. <coughs> so we have 13 minus 6 over 2 minus 6. Okay, so difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. 13 minus 6 is going to be 7 over 2 minus 6 is negative 4. Okay, that is my slope. All right, Oop, that's not a very nice M. Let's try that again. There's my slope. Okay, now I have two points and the slope. Well, we have a form that we can use for that. 
point slope form. So I'm going to bring in my point slope form. Remember, that's y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1, like so. Then I'm going to pick one of those two points to put in there along with my slope to write my equation. So I'm going to take this one just because it's smaller numbers. I like smaller numbers. So remember, we fill in that point for the y sub 1 and the x sub 1. So we have y minus 6 equals m, which in this case is negative 7 fourths times x minus my x value from that ordered pair is 6 as well. Okay, remember, if we take this y, we must take this x. We can't jump over here. Okay, so then I've got it in point slope form. I'm going to go ahead and convert it into slope intercept form. To do that, remember, we're just going to distribute this through. So we have y minus 6 equals, distribute that through, negative 7 fourths x. Negative 7 fourths times negative 6. Remember, this, write it as a fraction, is just that. So a negative times a negative is a positive. So positive 42 over 4. Okay. Then I'm going to bring this 6 over, so plus 6 on both sides. So then we have y equals negative 7 fourths x, and then we've got 42 fourths plus 6. Well, hmm, let's maybe do a little simplification there. Uh, 40, that would be uh, 10 and a half, I believe. Let's see. If we go divide it by 2, it would be 21 over 2, and change that into a, a mixed number. 2 goes into 21 10 times, so it would be 10 and a half. So 10 and a half plus 6 would be 16 and a half. I'm going to go ahead and convert that to 16 and a half, or 16.5. Okay, so there's my best fit line, okay? So I found it again by picking two points on the line, then finding the slope, feeding the slope along with one of the points into the point slope form, and then converting it into slope intercept. Now, the reason I put it into slope intercept is because then if I have an x, I can easily put it in there and see what the y is going to be coming out right away. Okay, so let's say that we want to use this equation then to predict well, what would the y value be if x is 3.5? Hmm, how we could do that is go ahead and put 3.5 in for x. So, if we do that, we have y equals, I'm going to switch colors here, just to show we're doing something a little bit different. <coughs> so we have y equals negative 7 fourths, Oops, 7 fourths times 3.5 or 3 and a half. Since I've got a fraction there, I'm going to go ahead and make that into a fraction. So 3 and a half as a fraction would be 7 halves. Okay, then plus 16 and a half or 16.5. Then I can go ahead and multiply across top and bottom. So then I would have, um, let's see, we've got y equals a negative times a positive is going to be a negative 49 over 4 times 2 is 8 then plus 16.5 and if we change this into a, a mixed number so that we can work with it a little bit better or you can grab your calculator and work with it as well um, 8 goes into 49 6 times so that would be negative 6 and 1 eighth. So 16 and 1.5 minus 6 and 1 eighth would be, let's see, 10 and, let's see, that would be 10 and 3 eighths. So that's going to be equal to 10 and 3 eighths. Okay? So if we look, notice, according to our graph, we go over 3.5. 10 and 3 eighths, yeah, that appears to be about right. Just a touch under 10 and a half. Okay, so that would be our prediction 
based on x being 3.5. So we can use that equation to help us make predictions for other pieces of data that we don't have. Okay, so we can also use technology for this. Okay, this is just an approximation by hand. If you want to use some technology, graphing calculators will do this for you. You feed in this data into a table and use the appropriate commands for your calculator. You can find those online perhaps. Or search for online linear regression calculator and you'll find a number of websites that allow you to enter the data and then it will come up with the exact best fit line and the exact equation for that line that we can use that way. Okay, So take advantage of those resources but this is how we can do it by hand and get a good approximation. If I would feed this into one of the online tools I would find that that equation should be awfully similar to this one. The one last thing that we can talk about in relation to this is the correlation coefficient. And what that does is tells how well our data fits the best fit line. And that's usually denoted by a letter R, the correlation coefficient. And it can go from negative 1 to positive 1. And the negative values are a negative slope. The positive values are a positive slope. and as we get closer to 1, the line fits better and better. 1 or negative 1 would be a perfect fit for our data. And as we get closer to the 0 in the middle here, the data fits less and less well. And at 0, in fact, there is no correlation at all. It's just random data that there doesn't seem to be any sort of a trend. The correlation coefficient tells us how much we can depend on the predictions that we're making out of there in our best fit line. If the data is more spread out, then we probably can't depend on this as much as we can if the data is closely uh, situated around our best fit line. So, linear regression, you can use technology, you can do it by hand like we did here. Hopefully this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. I know you can do it.